he will see to me. Yes, sir. So let me ask you one question, Mr. Brush. When they came, in, when you were at MIT, how did they approach you? Uh, they did. Uh, it depends on what you mean by at MIT. Uh, I got out of high school in '42, I guess it was, and uh, I had qualified for entrance to uh, either Cornell or MIT or you know schools like that. Mm -hmm. yeah, and uh, so I joined up, signed up with MIT, and I reported in probably September of that year, 42. And um, after I got there and got into the studies, into the program, all right. I was legitimately a student. They convened the student body as a whole in a big assembly hall. And they said, if you sign up as a uh, recruit, uh, we'll get you through the four years. Well, yeah. I'm not sure the promise was four years, but you stay in school, which I did. And I, I signed. I now you signed the oath uh, for the Navy. No, no, I mean Army. For the Army. Basically Army. Yeah. Okay. Right. Okay. Right. And uh, so I, I uh, went. Of course, I was in in school as a student. And I stayed that way through Christmas vacation, probably. And I went home for Christmas. And in the mail was a order to report <laughs> Fort Meade, Maryland. And at that point, I was no longer just a student at MIT. I was in the Army. And um, actually, after reporting to Fort Meade, they shipped us off. And I went to Camp Wheeler in New York, Georgia. Um, and when did they start testing you? Test, taking tests? I don't know. I guess I was tested in high school. All in and then after I uh, got to Camp Wheeler, uh, probably more testing. And after 13 weeks of basic training. Well, how did you get into the atomic bomb program? That's a... Well, I mean, you had to have sparks well, after to get 13 into weeks of basic training at Camp Wheeler. And without any foreknowledge of what was going on, I didn't really know. You know, I'm poetry. Just a kid. Yeah. Freshman, freshman in college. And uh, at that point, I wasn't even in college. I was just, yeah. you know, free. But um, then I was assigned to the Citadel in uh, Charles South Charleston. Charleston. Yep, yep. Charleston. And I spent, I guess, three or four weeks at the Citadel. It turned out that was a reassignment uh, location. And that was, I guess, the subject for the time where the intense testing. And I'm sure part of that three or four weeks was spent in testing. Was it what, physics? What were you testing like? Good question. I don't know. <laughs> um, I know the Signal Corps was looking for recruits, and we were tested on code. And fortunately, I <laughs> failed that. I didn't didn't work for me, so I didn't make it to the Signal Corps. Um, but uh, after that time, 
for whatever reason, I don't know, they did their testing and decided that uh, that I should go into the ASTP, which is Army Specialized Training Program. And uh, under that program, there was a Navy V-12 program, which is similar. Uh, you're assigned to a school. My school was Rutgers. And so I started in Rutgers right after that. So I was, of course, still in the Army. And I spent, um, I guess, 18 months, maybe two years, in Rutgers. And, and the Army's paying your tuition. Yeah, oh yeah. Yeah, it was in uniform. Yeah, we had special drills and, and everything. The Army. I was in the Army. But <laughs> stationed at Rutgers. Yeah. But, um, the, uh, whatever. Um, the, the, the time was divided into increments of three months. And every three months, you had a, more testing. And um, some of the guys didn't do well after three months, let's or even the next six months, whatever. And in general, if, if they didn't qualify for the next term, they were sent to Shenango, which is a uh, combat replacement. So that's not the right term. But it was... Uh, Training troops to go overseas. Combat training. Hmm? Combat training. Yeah, but training uh, with the uh, assignment to a special uh, group expedition. What do you okay. call it? Uh, a unit overseas. Okay. It was already in combat and had suffered casualties. Well, the difference was that you didn't get the field training that you would have gotten had you been drafted into a unit here in the United States. You got shipped overseas. And you're in the mess right off the bat, huh? <laughs> and uh, some of those guys, I think, were actually went in D-Day, uh, shortly after D-Day. Um, and, uh, but I managed for 18 months, which is six terms. And at that time, I was reassigned to Los Alamos, not knowing anything. As I was say, you didn't know what you were getting into, no. huh? <laughs> Absolutely not. No, I, I remember seeing some guy in a, in a, in a, uh, in the men's room on a break. He was at a party or something. And he said uh, something about reassignment. And I said, well, I'm reassigned to New Mexico. And he jammed up. He, he, he went to silent. Yeah, he wasn't saying anything about it. <laughs> he, knew what, he knew what it was you yeah. didn't know. And I, I wondered afterwards, what the heck's the matter, you know? <laughs> but anyway, we got on a train, and, by a train, and uh, of course, we're, at that time, we didn't have cross country trains. Yeah. You had to stop. <laughs> we used to say you could ship hogs from the one coast to the other, but you can't spit people. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, you have to stop in either St. Louis or, or whatever. I, I 
forget now what, what I was, but we had to change trains. Did you have a security clearance and all that? You had to go through all that? I must have, yeah. And, uh, well, I don't remember the other thing. That was part of, part of the problem. It was a hush hush deal, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, God. Well, it was after. No, I mean, not, not just while I was there, but afterwards. Yeah. Still.